This is David Filippo, the left-handed right winger again. Um, we're going to continue on. Uh, we're now really getting into the top 20. I want to say bottom, don't get worked at the end, but the top 20. Because uh, these are the best of the best, in my opinion. These are the guys that are best. they got they, some mistakes, and that's why some are better than others or worse than others. Um, but, yeah, we'll just keep going. So uh, next we'll do William Howard Taft, who was the president, uh, vice president for uh, Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, from And then he became president from 1909 to 1913. Um, they didn't do a lot of eventful things, um, especially because in, in 1912, he famously ran against Teddy Roosevelt, who ended up being picked up by the Progressive Party. Uh, after the Republican, he didn't get the nomination against Taft um, in the Republican primary. Um, and then that split between them and the vote pretty much gave the election of 1912 to Woodrow Wilson. Um, but Taft, uh, he, was more con he, was, he was, was more conservative than Roosevelt. Uh, but it's also been forgotten that, you know, he went along with a lot of Teddy's more progressive policies. Uh, in some ways, he acted more progressive than Teddy and actually got himself in trouble. And one thing that uh, Teddy Roosevelt was upset about was that um, he went after the trust of, uh, I think it was uh, United Steel. Uh, he didn't want us going after this. To whatever reason, Teddy Roosevelt thought the steel should be left alone, that trust should be left alone. I debate, too, if you're going to go after trust, why, you know, why pick and choose what trust you're not going to go after? But... Um, that was one thing. And then, and I think in the end, Taft just didn't want the job. He was not a fan. He, he wanted to be, um, he was more of a, more of a legal person. Eventually he would become the chief justice of the Supreme Court. He actually was the one who, uh, the next guy I want to talk about, Calvin Coolidge. He's the one who, um, essentially, you know, swore with him the oath of office. Uh, so it's kind of a, a former president swearing in a new president. was kind of cool. Um, I think he may have done Harding, too, and he might have done Hoover. But, yeah, he was Supreme Court, Chief Supreme Court Justice um, after being president. And I tell you, he was much more happy with that. That was a dream come true for him. Um, and especially, too, he's famously known as the probably the most overweight president in history. Uh story of him, like, getting stuck in his bathtub and things like that. Um, but to say largely, it was because of the presidency. He didn't like it. He ate a lot more than he should have and wanted to and put on a lot of weight because of it. Uh, so, anyway, we'll go on to, as mentioned, Calvin Coolidge, uh, who before becoming president was the governor of Massachusetts, my home state. Um, and he, just, he was a quiet guy. I, I do <laughs> like the story I was told about a young woman asked him, uh, say, Mr. President, I made a, a bet with a friend for $50. I could get you to say at least three words to me. And he looks up at her and just says, you lose. <laughs> I find that hilarious, but yeah. Um, great economically. The economy's great. The roaring 20s were roaring for a reason. Um, he lowered our debt financially. He's probably one of the most gung-ho, um, laissez-faire, uh, presidents in that, you know, just administrated it, make sure bills were paid, everything's done. And economically, he's probably by far one of the best presidents we've ever had in that regard. Um, some may debate that his policies may have led to the Depression. Um, and I still wish at kind of at this point he didn't try to choose to run for re-election, I believe there was an illness. I think one of his children passed away, or, or might, no, I don't think it was his wife. Uh, but someone passed away, and he just said, "I'm not going to run again." And because I still wonder, Hoover wasn't strong enough a conservative. I mean, he has pluses and minuses, um, but being such more soft with relief efforts uh, during World War One, I, I think more of his mindset was on you know trying to help people, at, uh, and which is why he kind of fell in the same boat that Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was the worst president, fell into. Um, just being too helpful, more helpful than the government could or should do. Um, Coolidge, you know, might have been the turning things around with a couple of, you know, adjustments here, changes there. But, uh, you know, we didn't get that opportunity. But, hey, he, he, like I said, he's one of the best. He's in the number 19 out of 20. Um, no, I, you know, so he is all right. Uh, but then we go to uh, James Knox Polk in the, the fabulous 40s. Uh, from 1845 until 1848. Uh, 1849, I should say, um, and he was known for being president during the Mexican War, which a lot of people cry. It's our manifest destiny, uh, trying to go after the land grabs and that sort of thing. Which, uh, for that reason, I, I, I don't, I don't know why people so hard on the idea of manifest destiny. I don't think it's a problem with wanting to grow the nation as long as you do it right. And you could some debate the right and wrong of how our nation grew, but in theory, it's a nice idea. I probably wouldn't have voted for, for Polk. Um, but I would have supported his presidency after you know, hearing these actions. I, I probably would have gone to vote for, I think he ran against Henry Clay in 1844, but I probably would have gone, um, voted for Clay, but I would have been very happy with his presidency. 
Because I think it's a smart move, like with the whole issue of Mexican War, it started, well, they'll play it, they'll, especially liberals, they'll play it the way, oh, no, we were antagonizing, we were standing on their land. Well, no, it wasn't. The border had not been defined between the United States and Mexico, or Texas, I should say. And we were staying, we wanted to protect our shared land, so we stood, our soldiers stood where we believed to be. Of course, Mexico attacked us. Well, sorry, Mexico had shed first blood. If they, you know, they were, they were refusing to talk about it. They were adamant about their land, and, and what happened? The war ended with them selling that in all of California and pretty much all Western United States um, to us. So I thought it was, I, I thought it was a job well done. Um, I do, as part of that though, I think we missed out on the uh, he had another bill called 5440 or fight, which essentially deciding where the end of the border of the United States and Canada would end and begin, so to speak. Um, and I kind of wish he fought a little harder because I really feel like you know the western half of Canada, you know. In the mindset of manifest destiny, that uh, manifest destiny, that should be all be ours. Um, but I guess because he didn't want another war too, which I credited him, I credit him on as being as part of a smarter move. We have the present line now, which is much lower, just above Washington State where it is now. So, so it's really good. Um, he kept all his promises. Probably the only president that did everything he said he was going to do, working his ass off. Um, part probably why he only lived three months after his presidency. About, I think about three months. It wasn't very long at all. And he passed away. Uh, poor guy. But uh, he's a president. I think oh, man, pretty good. He's up. Like I said, he's one of the best. Number 18 out of my book. Um, if we continue on, we'll go to Grover Cleveland, uh, who is, uh, I may have mentioned, he's the only president that ran two non-consecutive terms, from 1885 to 1889. Lost to Benjamin Harrison. I mentioned the other videos. Uh, I probably would have voted for Harrison, as a matter of fact. Um, I would have voted for Cleveland the first time, not the second time, but definitely for the third time after what happened with Harrison. Um, but yeah, 1885, 1889, and then 1893 to 1897. And his, his first period was great. You think he was economically right? You know, the budget debt was great. Um, he stood up against the, um, the unions. That was a tactful way because I think there was a good debate of how much power unions should have, and I thought he was good at that. And, uh, and I like his laws. He's probably the last good Democratic president we ever had. I don't think ever since him the whole party's got a mess, you know, adopting pretty much socialism and everything else. It's pretty bad, but he was good. Um, I think what hurt him is that, you know, coming right after, you know, the mess of um, Benjamin Harrison and what he left for the economy, got hit with the, the Great Depression of the 1890s from uh, the last pretty much his whole term. Um, and being so laissez-faire and having it dumped in his lap, he didn't look like he was helping the situation at all. It looked like it was his problem. He caused it. He wasn't fixing it. Um, so he took a lot of the blame for it. And that's kind of where he sits where he is now at number 17 for me. Um, it's not his fault, but it kind of throws on him. Um, also, uh, personally, um, I also don't like the fact that, I, like I said, I mentioned before in other videos with Clinton, and I'm really not happy if, you know, a little bit of the person when people get in there, you know, they're cheating on their wife and things like that. Um, though it was true, but there's a rumor, I mean, everyone knew there was a story of him, you know, how, you know fathering a child out of wedlock. Uh, which he didn't refuse to charge, but the issue comes down to the fact that there's two stories as to what happened. The the girl he went out was supposedly crazy. He did the right thing, took care of the child. He had her admitted to a mental institution. Um, talked to the doctor. The doctor would say she was clinically sane, not insane, clinically sane, and uh, supposedly Cleveland raped her, and then pretty much tried to bury the whole thing by putting her in an institution and taking her and the child. If any of that's true, and the fact that it's sitting there, and there's a lot of evidence to kind of show it could have happened, it's it kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I'm not kind of kind of disappointed with that. I probably would have put it a lot higher if that hadn't happened. Um, so that's him there. Then we move on to James Madison, who really is not a bad president. He probably should be higher, um, especially what he did for the Bill of Rights and stuff as president. But it's his actions during World War II. I feel like he could have done more to end the war quicker, maybe make less. But, I mean, we nearly lost everything. Washington was burned to ruin the White House. Well, time was called the executive match. was nearly burned to ruins. Um, I would have liked to have seen a lot more done. But, um, you know, otherwise, pretty good. The economy was good. He did well. Um, <clears throat> and then, lastly, i are run out of time here, but um, William Henry Harrison. Now, he was president for a month, but I think he could have been a great president. He had a lot of, he was a very good conservative. Stood for a lot of things that I believed in. Only thing shortcoming would be the fact that he was really an aristocrat, but he campaigned as a common man, you know, and and, and poor, well, uh, not so wealthy. Um, so all in all, uh, but I think he and he makes a pretty good president. 
Um, but that's it for now. We'll continue later on.